majestic white antelope once roamed most deserts of the Arabian Peninsula. Kaseifi Aseikali al Ferdi, shining like a drawn sword, as recited in ancient Bedouin poetry. This is the extraordinary Arabian Oryx. The Bedouin, who shared the harsh, arid environment, recognized the ability of the Oryx to survive where all others failed. Their herds of camels and sheep also benefited from the magical gift of the Oryx to locate fresh grazing. Just as we marvel at the ability of the Bedouin to survive adverse conditions, the Bedouin, in turn, continue to regard the Arabian Oryx as the real master of his environment, a true symbol of life. Hunting, using four-wheel drive vehicles and automatic weapons, led to a rapid decrease of the oryx population and distribution, until the species was finally extinct in the wild in the early 70s. Thankfully, a few animals were saved from the slaughter and kept in collections of King Khalid near Riyadh, Shahaniya in Ghatta, Sheikh Zayed in Abu Dhabi, and in American zoos. These animals bred in captivity and gave us the first glimmer of hope that one day the Bedouin symbol of life would once more roam the deserts of Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, the Arabian Oryx project started in 1986 with the creation of the National Wildlife Research Center in Taif. Reuniting the different bloodlines from all captive herds, 83 oryx were brought to the center. Well-honed breeding techniques, following good genetic principles, led to successful captive breeding and permitted the start of reintroduction programs. In 1990, the first group of oryx was released in the wild. The Arabian oryx is the smallest of the four oryx species and is the only one living in Arabia, while its three cousins are all found in Africa. As a desert antelope, the Arabian oryx is perfectly adapted to the extreme conditions of an arid environment and may survive indefinitely without direct access to water. Of course, like any other creature, the Arabian oryx needs water, but as a herbivore, it can get enough water from the plants it is eating and from the dew. The clear white color of its fur that reflects sun rays added to a metabolism very well adapted to minimize energy consumption also helps diminish water evaporation losses. Amazingly, the oryx is four times more able to survive without water than the legendary camel. As vegetation is rare in the desert, oryx travel long distances in constant search of green patches, sometimes ranging over 2,000 square kilometers in a year. In summer, when temperatures often exceed 45 degrees centigrade, the oryx range is reduced. At this time, they rest during the day, seeking shade from the sun under trees, and feed during the night. The hooves of the Arabian oryx are shaped to walk in the sand and to dig the ground surface. By doing this, the oryx can reach the roots of plants and can also remove the hot sand from the sun-baked surface in order to prepare a cooler place to lie down and rest. Arabian oryx usually live in groups ranging in size from a few individuals to dozens. The number of animals in a herd changes as groups mix together or split depending on chance meetings and food availability. However, it's not unusual to see a solitary oryx. Most of the time it's an old male that has lost its dominant position in a herd or a pregnant female that is temporarily split from the group to give birth. The herd is organized around one dominant male that must permanently guard his females and their young. Regularly, the dominant male has to fight and defeat younger challengers in order to keep his leadership. Dominance fights can lead to death. However, more often than not, one of the males literally lies down 
showing his submission to the other. But the long, sharp horns can cause severe damage. It's quite common to see an old oryx with only one horn, the other one having been worn down and finally lost after repeated fights. This might be one explanation for the mythical unicorn, or it could be that when viewed in silhouette, the oryx appears to have only one horn. Females always give birth to only one calf at a time, but as their gestation period is eight and a half months, they can sometimes calve twice in the same calendar year, if conditions are favorable. The first place where the National Wildlife Research Center reintroduced Arabian oryx was the Mahastasaid protected area, a 2,250 square kilometer fenced area located 160 kilometers northeast of Taif. Between 1990 and 1993, 72 animals were released into the protected area, monitored by rangers and researchers. Oryx then bred naturally in the reserve, and their total number had reached around 700 in 2003. In 1995, a second reintroduction program started at the western edge of the Rubalkali, or Empty Quarter. The protected area, situated between Najran and Wadi Adawasa, is known as Uruk Benimarid, and was remembered by the local Bedouins as a last refuge for oryx and gazelle in the 1960s. This time the protected area that covers 12,000 square kilometers is not enclosed and oryx are able to move wherever they want. Between 1995 and 2003, 17 groups of oryx were translocated by plane from the Taif breeding center bringing the number of oryx released into the sands to 149. The animals started to breed naturally 